Hi! Welcome to this second video about tethering with the Fujifilm X-T2 and today we're going to talk about Capture One. My name is Ivan and I'm a full-time photographer and an official Fujifilm X ambassador. Today we're going to talk about tethering with the Fujifilm X-T2 camera and the Capture One Pro 10 software. Uh, it's an impossible project, I know, but we're going to make it work anyway. I've been doing uh, this setup for close to two years with the Fujifilm X-T1 camera, so all of the stuff you see here today can also be used with the X-T1. First of all, all the things I said in the first video also apply to this. You have to set up your camera so you have uh, uh, the the you go down to the wrench and to the connection setting and you set your uh, PC shoot mode to USB auto. It's off by default, so you have to have this to USB auto to make it work. That way, the camera can talk to the computer. And by the way, we're still using the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. This uh, model has uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 uh, gigabytes of SSD drive, and an i7 processor. A fast machine, excellent for tethering, especially since you can disconnect the keyboard and have, just like a tablet, you know, you have only the screen. Also excellent for working on location in, well, Capture One software, for instance, or Lightroom, or um, tweaking your RAW files, sending them to Photoshop, and uh, keep on working there. It's got great colors, great color accuracy, uh, I should rather say. So this device, it's something I've been become very fond of. Okay, so, Capture One. It's the best software out there for tethering, and if you ask me, it's also the best software out there for developing your RAW files. It has excellent technical quality out of the files, great colors, great sharpness, great everything really. And it's, it's too bad they don't support Fujifilm cameras uh, natively in the software. I go to bed every evening and cry myself to sleep because of that fact. So, Phase 1 and Fujifilm, if you're listening to this, please why don't you put your great minds together, agree upon something, make a great solution, and let us have tethering to the X-T2 camera in Capture One. Well, that being said, let's move on to how I do this stuff, okay? But since Capture One doesn't support tethering with Fujifilm cameras yet, you need one other piece to this puzzle to get it to work. And as you can see here on the Fujifilm main website, they have something called the tethered shooting software HSV5. It's called the Hyper Utility, and it's a piece of software for Windows that lets you shoot tethered with your camera. And that's just the part we need here, together with Capture One. And um, as you can see here, this is only an updater. You also need the complete CD-ROM, the complete software package. Uh, and uh, I contacted Fujifilm today and they told me that you can just go to your camera dealer and order it. Uh, and you can also get it uh, some places online. Like here on the Fujifilm United Kingdom site, you can order the, the shooting software on CD-ROM to install it and then run the updater. And as you can see here, you can also get it through Adorama. But contact your dealer uh, and uh, they can order it for you. Fujifilm has it in stock, they told me. And there might be one other solution to this as well. Uh, in the Lightroom tethering video, I showed you the plugin. And like you can see here, you can select a folder where you want the plugin to save the tethered files without sending them to Lightroom at all. Uh, that'll probably do the trick. I've tested it on my Windows computer and on a Mac, uh, but I haven't gotten it to work, so I might be doing something wrong. So I have contacted Fujifilm to get some advice. But if this works, you can use uh, the plugin instead of, uh, instead of the HSV5. The bad part is that you have to have Lightroom running in the background as well as Capture One. And Lightroom is a heavy program, so you, you'll have to have a powerful computer. But with something like this Surface Pro, everything will run, run smoothly. I've tested with, with lots of other programs as well, like Photoshop Open and Bridge Open, and everything runs smoothly. Okay? Well, I don't know if you've heard of the HSV5 before, but it's a great piece of software because it does a great job of pulling the files from the camera over to the computer. But it doesn't, it's, it's not maybe the sexiest in, interface in the, on the planet, so 
um, I want to have capture one on top of it so I can have a, a great raw converter and a great interface to show my client. Uh, and the first thing we need to do after having set our camera to the correct uh, USB uh, mode, we're going to plug in our tether tools cable, the angled one, to get the camera and the, uh, the computer up and running together. And we need to make a folder structure to where we're going to put our raw files, the files coming from the camera. I do that by using Capture One. And if you follow me here, I'm going to use, I'm going to set up a session. I don't use catalogs in Capture One, I use sessions because that's the most appropriate to my workflow. So inside Capture One, we're going to take a plus and set up a new session and we're going to call that session something. I'm going to call it C1 Tether. Oops. Tether test, 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 ta tether test. And I'm gonna, where do I wanna put it? I wanna put it in this folder and uh, I don't have set up any templates here. So I'm gonna use the default one and I'm gonna get a capture folder, a select folder, an output folder and a trash folder. And I press okay, like this. And now that session, after creating some folders, that session is, you know, it's, it's there on my folder structure. Uh, and you can uh, you can see it if we go to uh, to uh, a browser, for instance. You can see you can go to to my images here, and we can uh, see the C1 tether test. And here you see the folders: capture, output, select, and trash. And if I now start the hyper utility software from Fujifilm, the HSV file, let's fire that up. And as you can see. Capture One looks much slicker, it's, it's a sexier interface, it looks better, so when you're going to show your client something, you need, I, I want it to look, you know, as good as it can. But, this tool here is excellent. And if you go to the tools menu like this, we find a selection that's called Control a Tethered Camera, or an option called Control a Tethered Camera. If I select that one, I get the... Um, I get the, uh, okay, it says it cannot access the specified folder and that's okay because it doesn't know the folder I just created existed. So I'm going to press okay and I'm going to go to where my images are and I'm going to go to the C1 tether test and choose the capture folder like this. And now it says up here, as you can see, Fujifilm X-T2 camera connected. And the great thing here is that you have the possibilities you also had in the Lightroom plugin. I can select PC or camera and I can control it and if I, now it's selected as, uh, as a camera. So if I go here and change my, if you, if you pay attention to this here, the, uh, the shutter speed, if I go and change my shutter speed, it changes here as well. So that's great, the camera and the uh, HSV5 software are connected now. And I can also, in the settings here, choose the same stuff as I could in the Lightroom plugin. I can choose what do I want to be saved to the computer. The JPEG or the RAW, uh, the JPEG or the RAW on the memory card. Uh, and I prefer to have the RAW file on the computer and the JPEG and the RAW file on the camera or the, or the memory card. That works great for me. And one word of notice, if you choose both here, if you transfer both of them into Capture One, you know, both the JPEG and the RAW, Capture One gets a little bit confused because we're going to set it up so it displays the last image coming in uh, and if it gets two images every time it doesn't know, okay, these are kind of identical. So we're going to choose only the raw file and we're going to press OK. And now this, uh, you know, the, the HSV file, we, we're done here and we can go to Capture One instead. And here, in my, I mean my, uh, my library, and I just activate the capture folder like this. And I also go to the camera menu where it says hot folder enabled like this. And hot folder enabled means, I think it's on by default. It just means that uh, capture one is just, you know, it's uh, monitoring if the, uh, the, that folder receives any files. And you can also set auto select new capture we want to set that to when ready. That means that when, when the file is ready transferring and when Capture One is ready to, to display it, it does. It pops up in the big window. 
And as you can see now, if I fire up today, we're gonna use not only the train, I've even got this beautiful, uh, hairy little dude uh, joining the train. I'm gonna do a test image just to see if everything is, is with us here. Uh, at least the flash is and the camera is. And as you can see in, in um, Capture One, okay, the image popped up on screen. And if we go into the Hypers uh, utility software, we also see the same image here. So it's really the HSV5 doing the, all the heavy work and we get the good stuff out of Capture One because now we can start doing stuff. As you can see, the magic to this puzzle is really just to make a happy marriage out of HSV5 and Capture One. Let them work together and we can use, well, we can't use the full potential that, uh, that uh, Capture One could do if we had native tethering built into it, but we can get pretty far with it. Okay, so let's do a speed test. Let's do the same test we did in Lightroom. Remember, we shot 20 images, uh, about a second or a second and a half between them, and Lightroom took 1 minute and 40 seconds to transfer all images into the Surface Pro. Some might say, okay, get faster hardware, get a faster computer, you'll get Lightroom to work faster. But that's not the point. The point is that this solution is so much quicker than a Lightroom version that, I mean, it's not even comparable. And you're gonna see it and you're gonna understand why you can't just buy a faster computer. Because if you buy a faster computer, this setup will also work faster, okay? So I'm gonna put my timer here, my stopwatch, and I'm gonna get the internet roll rolling, moving, and we're gonna start shooting. Ready, steady, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can see the images are popping up quite quickly here on screen, right? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 with my hand. And let's see if we can get all those images coming over and see the time. Oops, I didn't even... Well, I stopped it at 38 seconds, but I think it was 36 or something. You might check that on the video. As you can see, that's, that's a whole minute faster than Lightroom. That's incredible. So you can't narrow that gap with Lightroom working faster and this it's it's impossible so it's it's not about the hardware this beauty here is working brilliantly and this setup is also working brilliantly so if you want to try lightroom do it you have plenty of possibilities there that you don't have here like live view and stuff but if you need a fast and stable solution that will work for you you can rate the images i can start working on them in my raw converter i can uh, if you if you join me here on the screen i can choose one of those with a with a troll in the front and you can you can say it's 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 very fast it's 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 a beauty to work with this uh, this uh, surface pro and the capture one and the hsv5 combination those three together is like a happy marriage with a with a, um, a, a nice kid that was kind of fast wasn't it a brilliant sequence fast stable everything everything went smoothly over to the surface pro great great job but there's one more goodie in this equation when using Capture One. And that's, you can have someone uh, sitting either on the other side of the room, not by the Surface Pro, uh, or they could be sitting basically anywhere in the world actually, watching all the images you shoot. Doesn't that sound cool? Because Phase One has an app for, uh, for uh, you can use it on the iPad for instance, called the Capture Pilot. And the Capture Pilot, let me tell you about it. When I was shooting here, I was uh, using uh, the, uh, the library pane here. If we go to the Capture pane, and we have something here called Start Image Server. If I do that, I start the image server, and on my iPad, I fire up the, uh, the um, Capture Pilot app. And now here you can see C1 Tether Test. Doesn't that sound familiar? That was the session we set up here. So if I go into the, into the C1 tether test, whoops, here comes all the images that we have been shooting. See? They just 
pop up on my iPad immediately. So what happen happens if I, if I decide to shoot another image? I go boom, and as you can see here, the image pops up on the iPad almost as quickly as it did on the Surface Pro. And that is so cool. That is so cool. I mean, you could be watching this shoot wherever you are in the world and you can even rate images on this iPad. So this solution here, this is something, I mean, oh, I would love for Face to, I don't think I've said that before today, but I would, I would love if Face included native uh, tethering support for the X-T2 camera. I can say it a couple of more times if it, if it helps. So this here, you can zoom into the picture and you can do lots of cool stuff. Hey, isn't that great? So, I don't think I have much more to tell you today in this uh, tethering video. If I get the time and the opportunity, I'd like to uh, make another video when, where you can see me work on a shoot or something, where you can do a more uh, interesting model than our internet troll in the background. And with that, I'm going to leave you with uh, a fast time and uh, the, um, the capture pilot possibility. And I hope that you've learned something today, that there are other possibilities uh, for uh, sh shooting with your, your X-T2 camera. You can use Lightroom for tethering and you can use Capture One for tethering with the HSV5. And uh, I hope you'll follow this channel and if you have any comments, please leave them down below or and press a thumb up or a thumb down if you didn't like it. And I hope you got something useful out of this. And uh, with those words, I'm going to leave you and say, have a nice day. Thank you.